Welcome to the Uptime Wind Energy Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Hall, and I have a special guest today, Anders Ropke, who is the founding partner and CEO of Wind Power Lab, which is based in Copenhagen, Denmark. And Wind Power Lab is an expert on blades and things around blades, but we're here today not to talk necessarily about blades directly, but we're here to talk about lightning protection and lightning detection and what operators can do to make their wind farm less susceptible to big lightning damage. Yeah, that, Andres, well, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh, so we're, we're in San Diego, which the weather's a lot better than Copenhagen at the moment. Uh, I was in Copenhagen a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. It was snowing, cold, miserable, and here it's nice and sunny, and there's a beach, and it's it's not a bad place to be. So we're at uh, ACP OM and S, and talking all things of all things lightning. Yeah. And so Wind Power Lab has developed a new, it's basically a software product or yes. an app, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. It's called Lassie. It's called Lassie, like uh, you know the watchdog. Yes, uh, we need something or someone to take care of our wind turbines. <laughs> yes, we definitely um, do. And as you could tell, uh, earlier in the week in California, you had really poor weather. Horrible weather. Thunderstorms and whatnot. Yes. And um, let's bring out the elephant <laughs> in the room, the lightning, <laughs> lightning issues, yeah. right? And um, with this product of ours, our offering is, you know, you can simply just go out and uh, inspect the turbines that uh, is in risk. Yes. And... Um, how is that possible? Well, we use, it's a global solution. It's something you can just uh, add coordinates, coordinates of the turbines to the system. And by doing that, you'll get an overview of the relevant lightning strikes within uh, the area where you have your turbines, right? Yes. So let's say you have, in the States, wind farms are huge. You right. have 500 turbines. Which one should I inspect after this? After the, the lightning storm, yeah. yeah. Big, great question yeah. to have. Yeah. 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 So it might be in the southeastern part of the wind farm, right? Yeah. But again, why should you do it? And hopefully the turbines survived the thunderstorm <laughs> uh, because they're designed for it. But let's sure. go check anyway. So we right. can pinpoint where to go and check. You get a work order list. You get all the relevant uh, lightning data information. And then we relate this to the IC standard and... Okay. The blade type, the LPS sure, system you sure, have installed. Sure. Do you have any certain risk on those specific turbines you should address? Ooh, that's a good insight. Okay. So, so the Lassie system is taking some of the global lightning network data and saying, okay, we know where the lightning strikes occur, and if I belong to this lightning, the Lassie system, I input my turbine coordinates. Say, here's where all my turbines are, and. Lassie then just is like a watchdog. It just sits there and watch for lightning strikes to happen around those turbines. Okay, great. But on top of that, it's saying well, this particular turbine has a susceptibility of X, and you bet this lightning strike may have triggered that. Let's go take a look. Exactly. So you could um, you could uh, explain this by uh, thinking of you being the flight controller in a huge <laughs> airport, right? Yes. <laughs> so we have clients where they have maybe 30 different uh, wind turbine types. Easy, yeah. And America, that's yeah. all fine, but they need to look across. And some of those turbines they have in the operational fleet will be more prone to damages. Sure. That's the basic fact. And some of yeah. them you don't have to pay that much attention to. Right. Nevertheless, True. what you would like to build here is a track record that you are taking good care of the wind turbines. Right. Because you are defending your asset value. Yes. Right. You can get your wind farm insured. Yes. And if you can get it insured, you can get it financed, right? right. So everyone is happy. <laughs> so th that's a unique product because the Lassie system doesn't require any hardware. No. It's uh, no sensor locally installed. Okay. So um, we use the global data networks yeah. that your insurers and risk engineers and er everyone use else would use. Yeah. But the secret sauce here is that we relate it to the blade specific information yes. and the IC standard. Yeah. So. As an operator, by using the platform, you can become a prudent operator because according to the IC standard, it's recommended you inspect if you have a lightning strike within three times hop height of your turbine. Right. That's So IEC if you can show that you're always doing that, if uh, show that to your insurer, right? Sure. Then I won't say you will get a reduced premium, but at least you can get your insurance to cover, right? That's because a good argument. You're, you're actually is. in control and Cost-wise, you will be in control because if you, for some reason, have a, a damage, 
then you'll find it in time and <laughs> not just wait until your statutory uh, inspection will uh, find it in maybe two years' time. Yeah, and I think that's the big issue in the United States and in Italy, Greece, Croatia, uh, Brazil, where lightning is a big problem. What tends to happen is you do a drone inspection once a year, yeah. roughly, sometimes yeah. twice a year. Yeah. But sure as, as anything, you do the drone inspection, the next week you take a strike, take damage, yeah. and then it sits there. Yeah. Because you just don't have the resources to go out and check. Yeah. And the storms in America are so massive at times. You'd end, if you just, if you just looked at the, the lightning data by itself, you would say, I have to inspect every turbine on the farm. Yeah. That's insane. Right? And technicians don't do it because that's what they're asked to go do, and that'll take forever. Yeah. So Lassie focuses the technician's effort to save time, but also to, to look to the things that are probably the hot spots yeah. so you can catch them. So the way we have done this is that every single wind farm should, of course, have a blade maintenance strategy, right. and part of that blade maintenance strategy is how do you handle lightning activity? Sure, sure it do is. You have a lot of lightning activity or less, really doesn't uh, matter here. Right. But if you tailor this to the correct way inside the system, then yeah. you can configure the blade type and then tailor your lightning strategy, if you like, to actually capture that as much sense. as possible. Yeah. Of course, no one can capture everything, but uh, yeah. remember that insurance is for the unforeseen events. <laughs> right. And if you're checking based on the data available, where you mobilize or prioritize it simply on probability, mm -hmm. right? And you do your best. Then, yeah. I mean, then, then you are, then you're, you're being a responsible you're, operator. You're being responsible, yeah. and I think uh, that's smart. It is, it's, and it's, uh, yeah. It's going to save you money. It will save you, like, uh, maybe factor five, factor 10, if you capture such a, a lightning damage in time. When Power time, Lab is the perfect case, because you guys know from all your experience of looking at damaged blades that lightning damage has been out in service for too long. Yes, and, and we see so many unnecessary damages, if yes. you like, so something that could have been repaired for maybe five to $10,000, yeah. which is of course a lot of money, but if you wait, it can turn into $100,000. Quickly. Yeah, and for a small fee, you can put your turbines up on subscription. Mm -hmm. instead and then yeah. get a heads up when you need to go and inspect and verify everything is fine. Okay, so if I'm an operator, let's walk through this process. Mm -hmm. I'm an operator, I've had lightning damage, I have no way of really detecting what to go inspect. What are the steps here to get hooked into Lassie? What do, what do I do and what does that process look like? So, first of all, you can reach out to me. Okay, <laughs> yeah. sure. No, but uh, we need to get you started on the on the software. So for your wind farm, yep. we would need a a coordinate per turbine. Okay. So we need to know where in the world your turbines are located. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and if you can tell us which blade type you have, sure. or just the, the wind turbine type, okay. then we have come a long way. Co commissioning wow. the date would also be nice to know. Sure. But the point is that uh, we will plug you into our system, then we will roll back time for two or three years. We'll do a historic data analysis. Of so strikes. Exactly. Oh, okay. And, and based right. on that, you will get like uh, the seasonality of the frequency of sure. strikes, the intensity, sure. Sure. what is going on. Yeah. And then you're actually ready to go for the, uh, yeah, in a moment you have the lightning season again here. Yeah. And then you're ready to go and then you can compare to last season. But this time around, you can actually, through your work order lists here, verify that nothing happened. <laughs> okay. And that's the track record. Yeah. And that's worth yeah, a lot yeah. of money. That, that is. So I get my coordinates in the system. I'm in the system, on the Lassie system. I can just log into that on a desktop can, computer, laptop? Laptop, what? phone, whatever you need. Okay, you, so you, it's on the phone too. Yeah, yeah and, okay. you can, and then you get notified by email if you like. Okay. Now you need to, uh, to attend your turbines. So when a storm comes through, I get an email alert saying these turbines I need to go yeah. take a look at because they may be at risk or yes. because the lightning is really close to them. And then that gets registered. So you not only you're adding the historical data, you're taking the, the new data and adding it to aggregate it. So you have an understanding of what the lightning history is for that particular turbine. Exactly. Okay. So, so you will like have a, it's a small workflow. So yep. in here you'll have these are the observations. These yep. are your warnings. Yeah. Then you go through the data. Okay. Not the data data, but I mean you you go in on on an alert basis. Right. And from the top. 
you will then pick and choose which one to attend to. Okay. Then oh. you go out and check. You take your picture if something happened. Sure. And then it will all be registered that you have actually attended to that specific lightning event. Okay, so you can take the, the pictures of the blade and put it back into the Lassie yes, system. Exactly. So it's like a, a, a history lesson yeah. of that particular turbine. Exactly. And oh, now, okay. if, if, we, if we should, uh, you know, then what, what about this track record you're building over the course of the season? Right. Well, if you have your renegotiation of your policy, insurance policy for the next season, then let's say in December, yeah. you roll it all out and you okay, have your track record and you can have a educated discussion with your insurance company. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have a, let's say, a huge uh, lighting risk in my area, right. but it's not that bad actually. We had 117 <laughs> strokes <laughs> yep. inside the relevant part of the wind farm. Sure. But according to the IC standard, I did what I could to inspect. Right. And out of the 117, I found maybe five damages, but the good news is I got to repair them in time. And you caught that's them. That's the prudent operator. That's a, that is a prudent operator. And that's also the one that you would like to have on your insurance policy. Sure. And because you can implement Lassie very easily, you, you could be up and running in a matter of a couple of hours, it sounds like, a day. Yeah. Yeah, you could be up and running for a whole farm or yeah. farms. Yeah. So that that is a subscription model or is it a something you purchase what it, what's the it's a, financial setup yeah. it, it, we have made it simple no megawatts or anything okay <laughs> it's a dollar a day a turbine oh a dollar a day off you, off you go okay so for a dollar a day i can track my turbines wherever they are anywhere in the world yes and you have a, a dashboard so to speak that tells me what the health of that turbine is okay storm by thunderstorm thunderstorm okay yeah. Yeah, and it gives me alerts when things go sideways. Yes. Yeah, and okay. inside the platform, of course, you can, if you're an asset manager with the responsibility of one wind farm, yep. that's your view. But if you have the overall responsibility, you can get it fleet wide as well. So wow. from this, you All can right. actually tell which wind farm is, you know, the worst, right, the best performing, and so forth. You could take your technicians and focus them on the problems at hand, yes. not just spread them around searching yeah. for issues. And, and yeah. of course, we know a lot of other work orders needs to go through uh, in <laughs> yeah, farm yeah, maintenance. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. we also integrate to other uh, asset management platforms. So we feed that in uh, through an API, so you can get access uh, to the data if you're using uh, another system for handling all your activities on site. So if you have like a SkySpec system where you have a data collection, uh, base you field, can, or right, there's yeah, a whole bunch of them right now. Or, so your, yours will just plug into that existing other platform. Because we are so blade centric on this one. Sure. With respect to the lightning yeah. uh, risk. And so we, I would say we are kind of the expert software. <laughs> and yeah, then yeah. that is being translated into a work order. Go check. Got it. Okay. Wow. That's a really interesting piece of technology. So that, that is very useful. Because I do think a lot of operators all around the world have issues with lightning, but they don't have a quick way to get something implemented and to start tracking it, which is the problem. Yeah. And they're they're behind. So if, if you're going back in time to give them a history, that really helps them understand the scope of the problem they're dealing with. At least it gives you kind of, kind of some kind of magnitude, right? Right. And of course you could also do this on your own, uh, get a <laughs> subscription with one of the data providers. But That's again, super expensive. It, it is. And, I, and I've seen it. Those yeah, numbers are yeah, astoundingly big. Yeah. For a dollar a day, you're much better off doing a Lassie system. Yeah. Because it's the same data. It is. And it's and tailored to you. And your blades. And your blades, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's that's fascinating. This has been really interesting. How do people find out about Lassie? Where do they go? How do they connect with you? Yeah. So you can go on LinkedIn and, of course, look me up if you can spell to my last name. <laughs> um, otherwise, go to windpowerlab.com or yeah. we have a dedicated website called lassiewatchdog.com. Lassie, so, LassieWatchdog.com, okay, that yeah. should be easy. Then uh, you can get in touch, and uh, what we would ask from you is a couple of coordinates, and then we set up a meeting, and uh, you can see for yourself on your own turbines how bad it is. Wow, okay, useful technology, this is really cool. We always like having things on the podcast that are actionable, that can change the direction of an operator. This just sounds like one of them, so went Power Lab at it again. This is cool. Thank you. Anders, thank you for being on the podcast. I appreciate it. Yeah, and if you have any issues with lightning and you need something that gets up and running so you can get a better understanding of what you're up against, reach out to Anders here. Reach out to Win Power Lab and check out the Lassie system. Really cool. Anders, thank thanks for being on the program. Thank you.